When it comes to the most important and most playable part of each seasonal offering, to me, it's weaponry. Weaponry is entirely independent. It doesn't matter what map you play on, what mode, what features that come down to situational use, or things that can be stuck from one game to the other that doesn't transfer. Weaponry is that universal tie, if you want to call it that, that can transfer from game to game. And so therefore, to me, it's probably the most important content that we get each season. This season, with season two coming up as of Monday, we know of four weapons coming, but perhaps even more coming to Warzone in the way of Cold war weaponry. Today, we're breaking down the season two weaponry that you can expect, what to expect of them, how to get them, and when each will be released. As we go along in the nerd thoughts down below, are you looking forward to any one weapon in particular, any set perhaps that you hope to see, or anything that you would add to the games if you had the chance to? Drop your thoughts down below, but if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, drop a like on the video, and if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button instead of deal with all things season two related and anything COD oriented. If you'd like to stay in the loop with all things updates, news, loadouts, tips, tricks, anything else, I'd love to have you in the community. That said, Let's jump into it. Firstly, I want to start out with the flagship weaponry here with this, that being the Vanguard weaponry. That's the stuff that you're going to see advertised here right out of the gate with the Battle Pass with Season 2 and the upcoming content for either Vanguard or Warzone. First up on deck, we have the KGM-40 and the Whitley. Now, as detailed by the Battle Pass blog and some teasers that we're getting through YouTube short videos from Call of Duty, the KGM is going to be at Tier 15, while the Whitley is going to be available at Tier 31. Both available as free tiers, so you don't have to worry about buying anything if you don't want to. You can still play through, progress, and get those normally, but you'll see the KGM first. But the KGM-40 is described as a workhorse assault rifle, naturally steady and accurate, with a blog post and official description listing this as adopted across several Scandinavian armies during the war, and also the preferred weapon of Anna Drake. The KGM-40 is a high-caliber fully automatic weapon that rivals the first three assault rifles unlocked in Vanguard, boasting the second highest damage per shot in its category, a similar effective range to the NZ-41, and its fire rate above 600 RPM, this weapon can be a strong contender to mid to long distance engagements. Its strengths can be fully unlocked when the operator can control its recoil, a mix of horizontal and vertical kicks like the Cooper Carbine, but with slightly better centering speed. Now, if we're looking for comparisons to what this will be in terms of maybe say damage output or control, we already have a decent number of comparisons here with this. They mentioned a 600 RPM fire rate comparable in range to the NZ-41 and recoil like the Cooper Carbine, so that gives gives us a relatively decent picture here of this. 600 RPM places it right at the same fire rate as the STG-44, so therefore not top of class in fire rate, but also not lowest in class, so you're probably going to see damage properties rivaling that of the STG-44, picking up an all-around rifle. The Cooper Carbine maybe having a little bit more recoil based off of the fire rate compared to the STG-44, so this might have a little bit more kick, but also with an effective damage range similar to the NZ-41, not a half bad option here in terms of at least Vanguard play. Warzone, you might want to take some other weapons in terms of effective damage range for the long range play, but all in all, this looks to potentially be a relatively well-rounded rifle that's easy to pick up and play. Now, the Whitley is described as a heavy long range machine gun, cumbersome, but consistent. Also going on to further say, the Whitley represents one of the first machine guns ever used in warfare, rivaling its battle pass brother for a strong mid to long range tool across all three game modes. Despite its age, this LMG is highly customizable and even in its base form provides a niche role with the best damage per shot compared to its four Vanguard competitors. Now that right there giving us in terms of comparisons is already a pretty solid indicator of how this is going to play. Obviously it says that it's cumbersome, probably not going to have a really good movement speed, but it is something that's going to pack a punch. And if it's already a best in class damage per shot, that already outclasses the Bren, which has a max damage of 51 per shot. So you're going to be able to absolutely fry with this thing. It's just a matter of if you're going to be able to set yourself up for it. So it might not be the best weapon for a run and gun play style, but it is something that can absolutely get the job done. Now, outside of that, those are the two battle pass weapons that you'll see here with Season 2. We also have the Ice Axe and the Armor Gera. The Ice Axe, that's just your traditional melee weapon here, a reskin here that will make maybe, say, Atomic a little bit easier if you don't want to use the Combat Shield to do those camo challenges, but realistically, there's not a whole ton to say about a new melee weapon here. This will be available in Season as described in both a bundle and a weapon unlock challenge, as we see with other melee weapons. Now, the Armor 
Chimera, this is one that is going to be a new SMG coming in season, and it's described as a very high rate of fire SMG, effective at short to medium range engagements. It also goes on to describe that it was only produced in small quantities, but this advanced submachine gun gave insights into how modern CQB armaments could function, even though its design was never built upon it in the decades to follow. Due to its prototypical nature, more research is needed on its available attachments and effectiveness in live fire scenarios. The Armagera 43 can be unlocked in one of two ways, through an SMG-based challenge or via store bundle to be released later this season. So again, confirming that you won't have to just outright buy this, you can unlock it if you'd like to, but realistically, it doesn't give a whole lot in terms of what to expect for the weapon, like that KGM-40 or like that Whitley. The only real sort of hint that we'll have here as to how this works is that it's a very high rate of fire SMG, which traditionally then means that we're going to have either a lower damage per shot, higher recoil, a little bit more mobile in terms of its handling properties, so maybe we can start to construct that sort of idea around this weapon, but it is one that will be released later in season. Now, as for the timing of all of these releases, the KGM-40 and the Whitley, of course, those are going to be your battle pass weapons. Those are going to be at launch as soon as the season starts. The Ice Pick, I would imagine, based off of educated guesses, around two weeks after launch here, giving us something to look forward to, but not really taking away too much from the seasonal launch or the mid-season update. Though, it could be immediately. We saw the Sawtooth and the Katana both available immediately in Season 1, one in the Battle Pass, one in the Challenge section, so we'll see how that all shapes up. And then the Armagera, I'd imagine, is the mid-season updates weapon that is dropped here at that. But those timings are all subject to change based on educated guesses and what we've seen in the past. However, what may be strange is that right now, this is the smallest amount of weapons we've seen in a seasonal offering since, well, over a year. Season 1 had 5, the Cooper Carbine, Karenko Anti-Tank Rifle, Sawtooth, Katana, and Wellgun. Season 6 of Cold War had 5, the Grav, Lapa, Ironhide, Battleaxe, and Hammer and Sickle. Season 5 of Cold War had the EM-2, Tech-9, Kane, Marshall, and Psy. Season 4 of Cold War had the C-58, MG-82, Nailgun, OTS-9, and Mace. Season 3 of Cold War had the PPSH-41, Swiss K-31, Carve-2, Amp-63, Ballistic Knife, and the Baseball Bat. Season 2 of Cold War had the Farah-83, LC-10, Machete, E-Tool, R1 Shadow Hunter, ZRG 20mm, and, well, need I go on? But what's perhaps even stranger for those total numbers is that some seasons actually had even more than those listed, but not specifically for Cold War. Season 2 had an additional weapon rounding out that total to 7 when the Psykov pistol was released from Modern Warfare. Season 4 added another one, making its total 6 with the introduction of the CX-9. Season 5 topped off with 6 as well with the introduction of the Rao from Modern Warfare. So with 4 weapons coming in Season 2, that's notoriously low by comparison in the weapon offering unless we have something coming elsewhere or in season. And lucky us, we do know of two weapons that have recently popped up in the Cold War game files. We talked about this briefly a couple of days ago, but recently there was a Cold War update, update 1.28, that on the surface kind of only changed a few small quality of life details with UI and other things like that. But it was a nine gigabyte plus update that has a lot more data in store than what was just to cover those basic changes. Now. Data mind was a couple of different things, maps, operators, but also weapons. We ended up seeing that there were two weapons introduced here into the game files and could very well be coming to season two here. Those being the Vargo 52 and the Scythe. Now the Scythe is a melee weapon. So again, it's just a reskin of your knife. Don't really need to go too far into depth with that one. That's gonna be available via a bundle and a weapon challenge whenever it is eventually released. But the Vargo 52 is a new rifle here for Black Ops Cold War that there's really not a whole lot known about it. This was something that was data mined. The models are there. It's available in game, but when you try and force load it into a game as data miners have attempted, it doesn't come up with any ammo or anything like that. So you can't see as the time of recording this recoil patterns, max ammo in terms of base magazines, damage properties, things like that. So we just know of the fact that there are two additional weapons in the Black Ops Cold War game files right now. Whether or not they actually do come within season two, that is a question that only time will tell, but we have seen these weapons that get introduced from previous games be part of like random drops throughout the season. So it's quite possible we could end up seeing five, maybe six weapons in total in season two, depending on what happens with these two. But that said, that's your weapons here for Vanguard, Warzone, and even Black Ops Cold War coming to season two, which kicks off in just a few days here. I wanted to fill you guys in. We didn't quite get to talk about these weapons in detail, give you a relative understanding of what to expect with them and how you may end up seeing all of them come to fruition. 
intuition. But that said, that's going to wrap the video up. So I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. Is there anything in particular you guys are really looking forward to out of this batch of weaponry? Anything that you guys would hope to see in the near future? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, drop a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing running all things Warzone, Vanguard, anything COD related, we got you covered here on the channel. Season 2 is right around the corner, and we'll keep you the day with absolutely everything you need to know. So if you're interested, love to have you in the community. But said, my name's been Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.